So, you have some people in the background of your shop, but you don't have the budget to say, Get off the set! Well, it's a good thing you're here, because today we are discussing three techniques of how to remove unwanted objects in difficult shots, starting right now. For today's tutorial, we're going to be using these shots of a young girl on a distant planet, otherwise known as North Carolina, which apparently, for some reason, has a bunch of beachgoers walking in the background ruining our shot. We need to get them out. So let's go ahead and look at our first technique, which is... Starting off, we're going to be going as basic as it gets, which is just adding an object over top of what we're trying to remove in our shot. In our case, it's going to be a large rock going over these people right here. First things first, let's track our shot, which I prefer to do in Mocha AE. So let's right mouse click on the shot, go to Effects, Boris FX, and Mocha AE. Select the Mocha logo to open up the software. Now in Mocha, let's select the X Spline Layer tool and draw a section around the background. If you wanted to draw another area to be tracked together, go to the X-Blind tool icon, click and hold, and then select the Add X-Blind Layer tool, and draw your second shape. For the settings, I usually prefer a minimum percent of pixels to be around 60, and everything checked here except perspective. Now let's track through our shot. Okay, so while the computer is working on that, let's take a brief moment and talk about a mistake that I made during production. I would like to say that the full-length shot of the actress sitting down and standing up tracked perfectly in the software, but that is not the case. It was actually a nightmare because it turns out computers don't read out of focus sand very well. It's noisy, it's fuzzy, it's grainy, and if I could have a redo, I would love to set up C-stands with tennis balls on top just to have tracking points in the background. So learn from my mistake, let's get back to the edit. Once our track is done, save our project and exit out of Mocha. Now in our composition, right mouse click and select new null. We can name this null background track. Go to the effects control panel where you see Mocha AE, select the tracking data drop down menu and click create track data. Hit OK and then go to export option and set it to transform and set the layer export to our null. Then click apply export. Now let's go ahead and add in our object, this being a rock that I've already masked, color graded, and added some camera lens blur, and let's go ahead and place it where it fits. Now take the rock layer and parent it to the null. Now you can see we're getting this warp issue, so to fix that, just select our null, hit S on the keyboard to show the scale, and select the stopwatch to remove all keyframes. Lastly, let's add a shadow to the ground, which we can do by selecting our pen tool with no layer selected, draw the shape of our shadow, and then add on Gaussian blur. Then with our shape tool selected, take our pen tool again and toggle it to Tool Creates Mask and draw a mask to cut off the shadow where it crosses the horizon. Then let's make sure that the shadow is underneath the rock layer, drop the opacity a little bit, and then parent it to the null, now making our completed scene have a little bit more life to it, while also ironically getting rid of life at the very same time, referring to the people in the shot, of course. I've heard irony is fabulous in narrative storytelling. So for the second technique, we're going to utilize the clone stamp tool, which is similar to the brush tool, except for instead of painting, it just clones areas from your shot to other areas. So let's first take our footage, double click on it to open it in its own layer. Now let's select the clone stamp tool, and while holding Alt, you can select an area that you want the tool to clone. So let's go ahead and select this bit of sand here. On shots like this, where there's a lot of sand and a subtle gradient of lighting, try to select areas close to the objects that you're trying to remove. This will help match with colors and lighting when you're using the tool. So now we're going to be going frame by frame, brushing over the subjects until they are completely removed. When doing this, you'll want to make sure that your brush settings are set to single frame. And to do that, simply go to the paint window, which is to the right, then where it says duration, change it to single frame. Now right above this is the brushes window, where you can also adjust the size, shape, and feathering of your brush. If you're having trouble finding these windows, go ahead and just select the window drop down menu and select them there. Now once you've done that, you may have a slight flickering issue, and if that is the case, you'll want to right mouse click on the timeline and create a new adjustment layer. Right mouse click on it, go to Effect, Blur, and Sharpen, and select Gaussian Blur. Bring up the amount a little bit, and now you'll want to keyframe the mask around where we just painted over. We can do that by selecting our pen tool with the layer selected, and begin drawing our mask. Next, hit M on the keyboard, revealing our mask in the layer, and select the stopwatch for Mask Path to set a keyframe. Now we can go ahead and move through the shot, adjusting the mask where needed. Once we're done with that, let's feather out the mask a little bit, and now the flickering issue should be smoothed out. final technique, we are going to be creating a mega plate. Now, there are actually softwares out there that generate mega plates automatically, such as Boca Pro, but we're not going to be using that because number one, it's not included in After Effects, and two, it really wouldn't work that well with this particular shot that we're using. So instead, let's capture and export three stills from our shot to have enough reference for our background. So one at the beginning, one in the middle, and one at the end. To export a frame in After Effects, just click on the Composition drop-down menu and select Save Frame as File. Then we can export our stills 
in the render queue. Now let's open up Photoshop and create a new project with dimensions being rather large with something around 5,500 by 1920. Now let's drop our three images in, lining them up for the background to match as best as possible. Rasterize all three images and begin removing our actress and the background people from each shot. We can do this with the lasso tool by tracing around our subject and then going to edit, fill, and hitting OK. This technique should work fairly well, but where there are issues, we can clean them up with the clone stamp tool, especially if we adjust the opacity of the tool to gradually remove these harsh lines that may appear. Once everyone is removed and the stills and the horizon looks good, go ahead and erase the edges of the images where there's harsh lines from the overlapping, and then select all three images and convert to a smart object. Lastly, let's go ahead and highlight all the sections of the canvas that are empty and again hit edit, fill, and select OK. You can again touch up some areas with the clone stamp tool and now we will have our mega plate to make our background. So now let's head back to After Effects where we will first want to track our shot, again using Mocha. We will work just like before except this time have the link to track option set to none. So this will make shots that have a large degree of movement a lot easier to track. Also remember while tracking let's make sure that the spline shape doesn't intersect with the people. Once that is complete we will again want to make a null and export the tracking data to it. Next we're going to need a rotoscope our actress. So go ahead and double click on the footage layer and select the roto brush tool and paint over our actress until all the areas are highlighted and then hit the space bar for it to start rotoscoping automatically. Now that we have our actress rotoscoped, go ahead and hit freeze to lock it in and let's add our mega plate to the background and link it to the null. Keep in mind that after you've linked it to the null, you may need to make minor movement adjustments to the mega plate layer. In our case, we have a little bit too much rotation and the position slightly off at the end, which we can fix with simple keyframes. And just like that, we are not done. A couple more things, we're, we're close. Last thing to do is we wanna add some texture to the mega plate. To do that, let's first select our mega plate layer and pre-compose leaving all attributes and checking open up in a new composition. Now we have a composition of just the image itself to work with. Firstly, we can add some noise to our image to help it look more like footage and not just a picture. Second thing I'm going to do here though is add some sand elements. I got these elements from Motion Array, which is not a sponsor, I just believe in honesty. So we can take these elements, put them along the image, set the blending mode to screen, color correct it a bit, add some Gaussian blur, and now the final comp will look something like this. The cool thing about this technique is that we can always go back into our mega plate comp, add things or remove things quickly and easily, and they'll always be perfectly tracked into our final output. If this video helped out in any way, make sure you like and subscribe, and also be sure to check out my short film, Worm Radio, which will be streaming on the YouTube channel Dust next month. I'll see you in the next one, and God bless.